Okay, so I wanted to get started asking about the development of the series and what that process was like of deciding to make the series with the de several different episodes and what that process was like of getting it together overall. Sure. Um, sure. I, I can start and then Julian, you can find in. So, um, so initially, so both Julian and I have a sort of history working in short form series and um, in Canada, there's quite a few fun funds available for short form series. So um, Julian had made a sh the short film called For the Record, which is essentially episode one. And he had sent it to me when we were at a different, I the ITV festival and where we were hanging out together and realized we wanted to work on a project together. And so he sent me that short and said he had an idea for how we could make it into a series. And it was really, um, the short was great. And I really loved his story ideas of where he wanted to go. At that point, I had done one other type of anthology series and really wanted to build on that and really the music and the connection uh, with the link between the stories and the music and how it's all integrated was really exciting and we then took the project um, and we partnered through our music supervisor we ended up partnering with Universal Music and really helping us get this incredible catalog towards going to apply for funding and then we were quite successful and then we were able to um, to make the show. So that was kind of the development process along the way. And then we started to put the pieces together um, to go into production. And then Julian, yeah, I wanted to ask you as well about your experience of really working on the scripts and getting the project together as well overall. Sure, uh, you know, like a lot of things do, it started with a very painful breakup. Uh, and, you know, as an artist trying to, to work my way through that, the, the pain and trauma, uh, and what better, better way to do that uh, through my own work. And, and, you know, as we were, me and my ex were sifting through our vinyl collection, our record collection, uh, it kind of dawned on me that, you know, each one of these albums tells a, the story of a, of a moment of in time in our relationship. And I just thought that would be such a, wonderful way to approach a love story, uh, but making the music the, the centerpiece. You know, every song tells a story and they, that would be the hook and the drive for each episode's narrative. But I wanted to find a way to, to, to showcase this idea that, you know, for me, music is about connection and understanding each other. And also it's, it's, a, it's a common ground. It's a way of uniting uh, all of us, especially during a time of division. And, and for me, I think it was important to find a way to make that the, the central thesis of the show. And what better way to do that is to start with this couple breaking up with their music. And by the end, they find their way back together thanks to the music and the people and, and the stories in between. So that was sort of the initial, I guess, creative spark for it. Uh, and then, you know, I start from character always as a writer. So for me, I, I just, I always had these, these characters, this cast of characters swimming around in my head, some more directly related to our main characters, some not, some completely random. And what, what's the fun, the, finding the fun way to sort of connect these people in, in these really weird and random ways. Um, and so it started with those characters. And then also some of those, some of those songs, I, I, lyric bent, dancing to I Feel It Coming uh, while he's getting dressed to be a prep pastor. I, I don't know why, it was just an image that came mm -hmm. into my head. Uh, the, the, the moment where Joy chugs her champagne to, to Nina Simone, it's just, it was just images and the music fusing together and the character and then finding a way to see if I could, how I could tell that story and, and layer all those different elements. Um, but yeah, the first episode is definitely, you know, we started with the Beach Boys Pet Sounds because we, we, we were able to get the rights to that, that, that album and that song. So that became the, the anchor for the show and we built out from there. So I wanted to ask about finding the rest of the cast um, for the series as well and what that experience was like having them sign on and Julian you also starring in, um, in this show as well and what that experience was like of bringing the rest of the cast down as well. I could start off I mean Lisa didn't really have a choice I was going to mm -hmm. cast myself but I, I definitely also when I was going through like oh should I do this I, I really wanted to my first love is acting it's what I it's still my bread and butter but uh Lisa was also very very supportive of, of me playing that role and that also led to us being able to direct that first episode uh together um and it was just to have her there behind the camera uh, it's, you know, you're kind of, it's kind of like your, your, your outside eye and to be able to have that really great relationship that just improved my performance, uh, so much. Um, in terms of some of the casting, I mean, we went, you know, went through a, a particular casting call. Uh, Lisa has experience in casting. Um, she could talk about that, but, but originally it was, you know, a, a wide casting call for some of those roles, but some of them, you know, we, 
uh, it was the relationships with our directors. So Sutherland had those relationships with some of those actors. And for him, it was like, yeah, we need to get these people. And obviously Lisa and I knew who they were. So some were auditioned, but some were just, you know, offers. Anna Hopkins, who's my lead. I, I, I've just been a fan of her work for so long. And it was just a, a great chance to see she happened to be available. So get, get the chance to, to share the screen with her. And then Lyric Bent was a dream casting thing for Lisa and I that, again, um, he really responded to the role. It's not something he usually, it's kind of a spin on what he usually <laughs> plays. Mm -hmm. So for him, there was something exciting about that and also getting to work with Suds, who he's worked with before. Um, those were sort of some of the stories of, of how those came together. But we had like Johnny Orlando. I don't know if you want to talk about that, Lisa, but that was an interesting casting uh, uh, decision as well. Yeah, I mean, so I, as Julian mentioned, I have a background in casting. I've cast almost everything I've done for the last 10 years or so. And I, I actually have like an own casting shingle. So I have quite an extensive background. And the way I usually handle these short form shows, the shows that I do is that I actually go offers. I don't tend to do a lot of wide casting. You know, I, I've, a lot of actors sometimes say to me, how do I get in one of your shows? Mm -hmm. So I, I am very particular. I have a very particular style and sense. And if you watch my shows, you'll see that consistency across my work as a producer um, and casting director. So for me, I really, I offer, like when I'm working with creators, I really say like, you know, this is who I kind of envision for the show, for the role. And often, you know, because they're at lower time commitment, um, you know, with, with, so that's kind of the nice flexibility you have with a shorter show and with shorter episodes is you're not asking someone to give up three weeks. You're asking them for two days, right? Which gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, and then you can really go out for this sort of star cast and anchor per episode, right? And then for some of the younger roles, yes, we did put out a breakdown for some of the younger roles because you want to open up a little bit wider to make sure you can see who's kind of new and fresh um, for sure. So it was a bit of both, but you know, majority of these roles, yes, it was kind of in partnership with um, sort of our personal taste and with the directors and really putting together the best team possible, right? And the Johnny Orlando episode, since it was written um, really for him and the Universal team really wanted an episode featuring one of their artists, right? I mean, they, we had one with Zed's Dead, which is episode six. And that, you know, because of that personal relationship, we were able to shoot at their concert was amazing and that was a suggestion from our music supervisor that came from Universal because they really wanted we wanted something in the EDM space um, we also wanted to have some Canadian artists and some international artists right US artists so we wanted to have that diversity as well with the artists and then with the Johnny Orlando episode you know that story we wrote for Johnny right telling a piece of his sort of personal history kind of where he is right now in his journey right transitioning from a real teen heartthrob into sort of his next sort of leading man kind of roles that he's kind of looking to do and to be foreseen uh, seen as so that we knew ahead of time and then Julian wrote a beautiful episode for him that that he was his team really and him they really loved and so that was really interesting quite unique but had it gone to a different musician we would append a different episode right so it was really really specific we really try to and then with the cast, you know, if we had to make some slight adjustments in the language to make it fit that person, um, you know, that was something that Julian was open to doing too, to make sure that that authenticity was there, which is what's so important about those right kind of performances, right? You really want to feel that authenticity and you feel like you're a voyeur in that moment. And also speaking about working with the actors once they were cast, what was that experience like just overall, um, even though they all weren't there for um, that long, like you mentioned, um, only a few days in certain circumstances, but um, just overall, what was that experience like of really working with the actors to build their characters um, for their episodes as well? Well, I can speak, you know, as a director for episode one, you know, like it's great to, I mean, obviously Julian and I have a close rapport and then Anna I had to build a rapport with. Um, and, you know, that's the thing as an EP and producer on shows, you know, that's your job too, right? To make everyone feel welcome. Um, and, you know, I was just listening to an episode of a podcast with Brian Cranston was talking yesterday. Mm -hmm. And really it's top down as, as everyone says, right? If you really have this um, attitude of um, inclusivity, right? Um, a warmth, um, the idea that we're here to have a good time. We're here to work hard, to be prepared and have a great time. Then I definitely think that trickles down to the rest of the cast and the crew. And that's really what it's about, right? Because we really are making entertainment. We're making a show here. And it's nice when you have casts that I've done a few shows like this, where you have these two days together and it's quite intense and the whole team really rallies together because everybody's just got these incredible talents for the two days with hair, makeup, you know, your DP and everyone's really trying to get the best work um, out of everybody. And then, you know, you're in a new location the next day or two days with a brand new cast in a brand new location. You're like, oh, we're starting all again. Mm -hmm. 
So if something doesn't go great, you're like, great, we can start again. And then if something goes fantastic, you're like, fantastic, let's build on mm -hmm. that. So it's an interesting world because it's, it's very different than say the sitcom world where you're living with people for years, right? It's very different. And you can really have a lot of fresh energy can come in every two days because it's everybody's chance. You're on a new script, you're in a new location and everybody's just diving in head first. Mm -hmm. And then um, lastly, I also want to ask about getting to bring the show to South by Southwest and share the first episode with audiences and what's the, that experience been like uh, preparing to go to the um, screen the movie, uh, the screen the series uh, virtually as well. I, I mean, it's, it's our dream festival to play. Lisa and I have been there before with other projects and uh, uh, yes, it's bittersweet. We can't be there because the, you know, the energy is uh, uh, and the sort of the belly to belly connections you can make with people and other filmmakers are, are just unparalleled. It's my favorite festival to attend. Um, but what, what we, we were secretly hoping that South by would be our premiere because there is that organic you know, melding of music and story, love stories. Uh, so, so that just speaks to our show so well. So it's it's really the perfect place uh, to premiere. the The programming team has been so welcoming, and and um, you know, the hope is that yes, it 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 it, it does bring some visibility to the the project. Uh, you know, we want to keep making more. So so it's hopefully a chance for us to get some uh, additional exposure and use that to sort of. Uh, catapult ourselves into mm -hmm. uh, another season. Um, but it's, you know, it helps here in Canada too, you know, South by is a recognizable festival. And, and so it, it's been, it's been doing uh, well for us uh, here as well, but uh, we're just excited to get to screen uh, and, and meet some people online and, and yeah, share the show with them. Mm -hmm. okay, I think that was mainly it, but thank you both again for taking the time out today. I appreciate it. Thanks, Karen. No Thank problem. You. Thanks so much. Okay. Nice You're to welcome. meet you. Take care. You too. Thanks again. Bye. Bye.